Welcome to Martins Bay, New Zealand. My name is Scott. I'll be your guide today. We're going to be taking a quick look at how to get the Milvis Corsair started and off the ground. Notice I did not say this is by the book because it's definitely not by the book. This is what works for me. Um, I have read the book several times and experimented a bit. Some things work better than others. And there are just a couple of key modifications and a little tip or two that will make your life a lot easier. That said, let's get started. Step one, when you're dealing with a radial engine, such as the Corsairs, all of the oil settles to the bottom of the engine while it's parked. When you see people pulling on the prop slowly, just working it around, they're not trying to prime the engine or any other such thing. What they're doing is they're trying to get that oil to circulate a little bit. Because if you try to start the engine with all of the oil in the bottom, basically what's going to happen is the oil is going to be trapped where things are trying to move in quickly and it can't push the oil out of the way fast enough. So you're going to end up with what's called hydraulic lock and your flight is over before you even got the engine started because you just wrecked an engine. That said, click on the propeller and she will pull through. You want to do this two times. And while that's pulling through, let's take a look here. We're going to be taking off in that direction. You notice where the truck is, is about the end of the runway. There is not a whole lot to this place. So we're going to be doing a takeoff with a lot of flaps that is much more akin to what you would do on a carrier. Uh, Corsairs actually did take off from aircraft carriers without a catapult. At least some of them. Now the wings are folded. We'll worry about spreading them and getting them locked here after we're going. Tip number one, big one, tail wheel. The book says to keep it locked. That's all well and good in a real life aircraft where you still have some influence over the direction of the aircraft with the rudder even though the tail wheel is locked. In the sim, you cannot influence the direction of this thing at all, which is a big problem. What ends up happening is you get a lot of P-factor or a lot of torque. Uh, some people like to think of it as. And in essence, it's trying to twist the aircraft to the left. And the tail wheel is keeping the aircraft pinned on that trajectory. As soon as the tail wheel comes up, the entire aircraft will try to, try to twist hard. And it twists so hard that there's really no recovering it for a lot of people. Most people. Me. So, myself and a lot of others will tell you, take off with the tail wheel unlocked and be very mindful of your rudder and uh, be quick with the rudder so that you don't allow the nose to get too far out of line. Uh, so you want to be proactive with those corrections. Speaking of the rudder, okay, I'm accustomed to VR, I'm sorry. I'm using the mouse wheel to change things here and it's also changing my zoom. But by the book, we take rudder and aileron trim to positive six, which is to the right. Elevator trim, we're going to go, the book says one, which is correct and just fine if you're going to be taking off with anything from zero to 30 degrees flaps and you have some runway to work with. We don't have a lot of runway to work with. We're going to be taking off with flaps, say, we're going to try 40 and two degrees. Mixture control, idle cutoff, absolutely want to check your prop pitch, make sure it's at 100. Supercharger, if she is not in neutral, you're going to have a very, very short flight, um, and really the only place you're going to go flying is straight up when your aircraft explodes. Don't turn on the supercharger below, I don't know, what is it, 9,000, 10,000 feet, bad things happen. Throttle will be cracked for one inch when we get started here, and we're going to send the uh, set the fuel to reserve when the time comes. We want to make sure our magnetos are off, and actually we should have made sure in real life you would make sure your magnetos are off before you go pulling on that propeller. Keeps you from having a bad weekend. That said, 
we can turn on the battery and let's get some fuel going the red one is the fuel pump you don't want to be flying with that on but you are supposed to take off with it on and also have it on for the five second priming eh, about now that's good it's a little noisy so we're just going to get rid of it for a bit it doesn't affect you in the sim um, but you are supposed to have it on while doing your takeoff. Cow flaps. There we go with the scroll wheel again. The cow flaps are going to come open as the engine is starting, and we'll have to back those back down to about uh, 60%. So we are pretty much set. Um, magnetos to both and say hello to the dog toggle the starter we're going to watch for when the engine kicks and I don't know if I mentioned it when I changed the fuel over but it is on reserve oh and an inch of throttle okay when the engine caught we get the mixture level up lever up sorry watching our rpm here don't let it get out of control now you will notice that we're getting cylinder head temperature rather quickly oil temperature right there we want to monitor that not that this is going to do a lot of good right now but we'll get those open a little bit since the oil temperature is getting a little cool you manage your heat in the Corsair a number of different ways you manage it with cow flaps intercooler which will cool your fuel as it goes in then the oil cooler and another thing too is when you're running rich it will cool the engine you go to auto lean uh, if you are cruising and that will actually make the engine run a bit warmer so we get our instrumentation on over here and our radio. Go ahead and close that flap. One thing to keep an eye on, uh, technically you are supposed to take off with the fuel pump on. Well, it's noisy and uh, we just don't really want to deal with it. So that said, we are pretty much set to get going here. And as I said, we're going to take off that way. So let's start taxiing in the other direction. Brakes. Hello, brakes. There you go. One thing I notice uh, when not when I am not in VR, whoops, is if you're holding down the left mouse button to do something, like look around, your other inputs from your controls don't seem to work. okay I did forget one thing at Martins Bay we are taxiing on the grass which is going to take a little bit of oomph we don't have much oomph because the wings are folded up on the real Corsair that would not be an issue however Microsoft Flight Simulator has this interesting and strange thing where it doesn't recognize the fact that the wings are folded you could fly this aircraft this way because the sim thinks the wings are still extended. So in order to get around this uh, interesting little fun that people could have, uh, Milviz turned around and governored the throttle to 25% while the wings are folded. And 25% is not enough to push these tires through this dirt. So... It's one of the coolest things about the Corsair. Make sure those are locked, otherwise we'll have a bad day. Lots of ways to have a bad day in this thing. Speaking of, if, uh, if you're about to have a bad day, one of the nice things is that 
you can bail, but only if you. There we go. Only if you uh, opened your canopy first. Now, where were we? If you do this at Martin's Bay, something you want to be mindful of. Come on, baby. There you go. Something you want to be mindful of is the fact that this end of the runway we're going to has a hill. Go down the hill, you're not coming back. So there is one more key thing to know when taking off in a Corsair, and that is don't touch the stick. Don't touch the stick. Don't touch the stick. Now, as we get to the end of our takeoff roll, I'm going to grab the stick quickly and pull up in order to clear the trees. That's an exception. While we're on the roll, I do not touch the stick. The reason for this is that it's very easy to accidentally induce some aileron deflection, and the Corsair is extremely sensitive to this. Now, no, she's not going to roll. That's not what's happening. The aileron deflection will induce drag. And if I remember it correctly, it is the downward deflection that will get pulled on harder, causing the aircraft to twist in the yaw. And so... And there's that nice little hill that I'm trying to avoid. So yes, if you accidentally introduce, induce some aileron deflection, you're going to have a bad day. Like I said, lots of ways to have a bad day. Including hitting the brakes too hard. Now, we're going to go flaps 40 should work. If we get really stuck there toward the end, I'll try 50. Now this is the other tricky part. For doing a short takeoff, and actually it makes my life easier on any takeoff in this bird, I'm gonna hold the toe brakes and I'm going to inch the manifold pressure up, that's down here. Once we get up around 42, 45, somewhere in there, the nose is going to start to dip down as the tail lifts. That's when I'll let go of the toe brakes and then we will hit the manifold pressure all the way up until around 50. At that point, I'm going to let go of the stick. And actually, I'll let go of the stick even before then. And from there, it's just being very, very careful to keep the airplane straight as soon as it tries to yaw. The moment it does, you've got to give it a little bumper rudder. Um, actually, it's more like a medium bumper rudder. If you give it too low, though, you're going to end up doing what uh, motorcycle riders call tank slappers, which is basically flopping back and forth and having the tank beat your knees apart. That said, all that's left is to do it. So, uh, make sure that you do not have parking brake on, and that is my tow brake. So I'll put the toe brake on here in just a moment because I do that with the same hand that I'm using the mouse. Okay, 20. And there's some lag between when you induce, between when you uh, make a manifold pressure change and the RPM follows. So. Twenty-five. Coming up to 30. Let it catch up. Okay, up to 40. Start watching for the nose to dip at any time. Forty five. 
That's normal red. There she goes. Let go. Let go of the stick. Take her to 51. Ish. Be ready with right rudder. And pull up. Gear up. Flaps up one. Flaps up again. Manifold pressure back to 35. Flaps up again. Let's get our... Come on. I hate it when it makes me wait. There we go. This aircraft does amazingly well with no flaps near stall speed. So when cruising, your red line for RPM is 2550. Right there. And that is that. Um, the only other things... Take your mixture to auto lean and your fuel tank over to main and fly off into the sunset or sunrise or whatever. Happy flying!